A leitmotif simply is a theme that's assigned to a character or an emotion or uh, sometimes even an object throughout the ring cycle. And Wagner's use of thematic material isn't really unique because composers do that all the time. What is unique is the development of them. You know, in a certain sense, really, if there was no libretto, the music itself tells the story if you have a certain sense of what some of these motifs represent. What the light motifs do, it gives the listener really uh, a clue as to what the character is doing and thinking and feeling. And uh, in the best of circumstances, and it happens a lot in the ring cycle, is if you're really familiar with it, you know these things before the characters on stage do. The sword theme is perhaps one of the most crucial light motifs in the entire ring cycle, partly because it bridges three characters. It, it goes from uh, the end of Rheingold with uh, Wotan, and it goes from Wotan to Siegmund in uh, Valkyra, and then eventually it ends with, uh, with Siegfried's death. Uh, so it goes through the four operas, and it links three characters and really three generations. In the first act of Valkyra, the first statement of the sword theme happens when Sieglinda is trying to get Sigmund's eye to tell him, hey, there's a sword that's been put into a tree over there, and it's, it's, a, it's a good sword. If you can pull that out, you can use that to save yourself. And so that's when this uh, first sword theme happens. And this is repeated several times uh, in that one scene alone, uh, sometimes uh, tenderly, sometimes uh, angrily. Uh, if there's trouble ahead, he'll, he'll move one note, one half step down, and the entire leitmotif changes. Or uh, if it's a tender moment, uh, it, it might be in a higher tessitura. So it's, they're all instantly recognizable as the sword theme, but they change as per the plot. The brass section is unique in Wagner's ring cycle. Wagner expanded the brass section. The rest of the orchestra is basically untouched. But in the brass section, he went as far as to fill in the gaps between the instruments. He commissioned three new instruments to be made for his orchestrations. It didn't exist because he, he had sounds in his head that just didn't exist in the standard instruments of the day. He actually developed an instrument called the Wagner Tubin, which is, uh, it sounds like a, a high-pitched tuba. <laughs> This is what we respectfully refer to as a Wagner tuba. It started life as a German military band instrument. He only used the tubin in the ring. He added the four tubin plus the uh, contrabass trombone and the bass trumpet to the brass section. So I would say that the brass section is more important in the ring operas than it is in his other operas, as important as we are in those. <laughs> Wagner was absolutely revolutionary, and I think he was looking for something new and beyond what the standard format of opera had evolved to at this point in time. And all of this leads to a whole new structure and a whole new outlook for opera. <laughs> <laughs> 